this is the child age uh, male, male age three years, three, and a half, three to three and a half years and uh, you see how badly he has been uh, neglected because of the economic issues most probably as he has KUB issue and is being treated in a very good institute now uh, for the last four or five months. But before that he has been neglected and because of which uh, they, rushed, uh, they had to go to the hospital and were diagnosed of uh, suffering from kidney and urinary bladder disease, KUB disease, uh, because uh, of an anuria, he was, un and unable, he was unable to pass the urine, so they went to Lahore into the children hospital where he is being treated, he is catheterized, and let's see, let me show you the pathology he is suffering from. Okay. This is the right kidney in longitudinal section of this child. It measures 8.2. 0 cm in length, 3.1 cm in anterior posterior diameter and uh, three point five centimeter in transfer section. This is the transfer section of the right kidney and now see that the parenchyma echogenicity is raised as compared to that of the adjacent uh, liver parenchyma. So this is, uh, he is having liver parenchymal disease. Another thing to appreciate is why his urea and creatinine are with the normal is that the parenchymal thickness is normal and uh, it, the parenchyma may have approximately 10.7 millimeters. Corticomedullary differentiation is uh, seen. Here you can see that uh, this is the uh, parenchyma and this is the, this is the pyramid. So even at the upper pole, the parenchyma by 14.2. Internally, it shows moderate degree of hydronephrosis rather moderate to massive degree of hydronephrosis as uh, all the calluses are dilated from lower pole to upper pole these are the dilated calluses these are the dilated calluses he is having obstructive uropathy and uh, Though there are a few echogenic areas seen uh, within this. Uh, now the proximal ureter is dilated but cannot be traced uh, beyond this region. This is the proximal ureter, it is dilated up to 16.7 millimeters and we know that it should not exceed more than 7 in any case. Now let's uh, go to the left kidney and uh, in the left kidney you see that this is the proximal ureter. Okay, let's go step by step. This is the upper pole. This is the upper pole and the mid region. Parenchymal thickness is normal, parenchymal epigenicity is raised and uh, corticomedullary differentiation is seen. You can see this is the medulla, this is the medulla pyramid, this is the pyramid. And these are the dilated calluses. Now the 
this is a small tiny echogenicity within the uh, hydronephrotic fluid. This is the hydronephrosis, black areas within the center of the kidney uh, are suggestive of hydronephrosis. Now this is the upper pole, uh, sorry, uh, lower pole of the left kidney, parenchymal thickness is normal, and these black areas are the dilated calluses. Now in this kidney, the, this is the proximal ureter, this area, this tube-like structure, and uh, it measures 9.4, and the second thing to note is that in this kidney, the hydronephrosis is less as compared to the right kidney. Uh, here it is uh, from minimal to moderate with preservation of the parenchymal thickness Echogenicity uh, is low right, slightly raised. Uh, you can see, compare it with the spleen. This is the parenchymal echogenicity, this is the pyramid, and this is the spleen. So, intact corticomedullary differentiation is the reason why the urea creatinine is uh, being seen normal. This kidney measures. Eight point eight into eight point eight from uh, pole to pole, or in length, and three point seven centimeter in uh, anterior posterior diameter. This is the transverse section, and it measures. Three point one centimeter in this dimension. So the now we come to the urinary bladder. This is the catheter bulb. This area is the cat bulb. This is the transfer section of the ureter. Sorry, this is the transfer section of the urinary bladder with the catheter bulb within the urinary bladder. This is the longitudinal section. This is the catheter bulb. This is the magnified view to show you that uh, the distal ureter is dilated. And you can see that it enters the urinary bladder at the, the point from where it enters the urinary bladder can be easily <coughs> seen. And the distal ureter is dilated up to, this is the right distal ureter, this is the urinary bladder and here it is entering into the urinary bladder. So the distal ureter, right distal, this is the right one, the right distal ureter measures 9.6 millimeters. Normally the ureters are not seen in this region. So let's uh, see the status of the left ureter. This is the left ureter. This one, and we can also again trace it. This is the left ureter. It measures 11.6 millimeters, and uh, that distal ureter. And this is its point of entry into the urinary bladder. There are no stones seen within the urinary bladder. The wall is not uh, significantly thick. Now, when I place the probe transversely, these two eye-shaped structures that you are seeing are in fact the, are the uh, dilated ureters in transverse section. This is the urinary bladder. So this is a case of bilateral hydronephrosis with hydrourethral. and uh, has been catheterized. There is no evidence of focal lien. Now in such cases, 
we cannot rule out the possibility that he may be uh, suffering from posterior urethral valve and uh, our second possibility is that repeated uh, infections in our area may also lead to such pathology. As such, there is uh, no Oculean or calculus scene in the uh, urinary bladder. There is no pleuronephrium, there is no ascites, and the rest of the ultrasound is unremarkable. So this is a case of uh, subtive uropathy due to urinary bladder outlet obstruction. Thank you.